Hey, people of the Intrigue here, 1v1 Calderas of Finery, Blue Side. Is Paradox with a Chaos Lord. Durable and destructive hero walks through objects and cannot be suppressed with powerful offense and disruption fighting in melee. Got some Black Legion. Red Side, Sophia is a Tech Marine. Starts off in ranged combat, puts out some good damage, can also support with structures and repair. Double Scouts opening. You can dominate one side of the map with Double Scouts early on if you get one of them with shotguns. Are they both going to the west side? Looks like they are into Tactical Marines and Paradox with the more traditional CSM into some more heretics. CSM going east. Oh, the Chaos Lord's not going for the VP. It's going for their contested power over there, I think. Looks like they're going to run into heretics, the Double Scouts. Are they going to get shotguns, though? I think you can deal with them without, as long as you... Stay on your toes and move your scouts around. They're faster than heretics, as you can see. So just shoot with one, move the other. I think we're going to see shotguns, though. At least one. Chaos Lord is indeed capping that eastern power. Leaving the tech marine. Oh, he's not capping the mid. Just standing there looking at it. Misclicked from Sophia. And here's the harassment from the heretics. Well, the attempted harassment. They're the ones going to get messed around here. There's the shotgun blast, which sends them packing. And a good thing, because those fellas got doom blasted there. It's a bit slow to move, and once the heretic, you can't get, let the heretics get into charge range with that kind of thing. Tech Marine did not cap. Are they going to cap now? There we go. Kind of facing the wrong way, though. Chaos Lord and CSM gets onto the power. Going to get decapped here. Those heretics will reinforce. Oh, I only lost three models. I thought they lost way more than that with that much health. Stacking up in the mid now is Sophia. Chaos Lord is not going to be able to deal with all of this. The Tactical Marines popping their Kraken Bolts, which is not going to help against the Chaos Lord. Should have saved it for when they fight the Chaos Space Marines. Boost your damage by 20% versus Heavy Infantry, which is Chaos Lord being a hero is not. Well, the Force Commander with his Terminator armor on actually has Heavy Infantry instead of Super Heavy or Commander, which is a little bit weird, but Kraken Bolts would have actually helped against a Terminator Force Commander. We have more Tactical Marines on the way for Sophia, which has been cancelled. Raptors for Paradox, that should shut down the Tax and the Tech Marine pretty well. They still have those shotguns to deal with. It's only one so far, these fellas. There's the Blast, knocks those guys out of cover. Not, more, not much else they can do. So just take it out of there. Chaos Lord's healing up. These heretics also. These guys will eventually bash that western power. Scouts grab the mid. I feel like maybe those guys should have pushed up to decap some wreck points instead. Paint it. Kind of safe so far, Sophia, with these cappings. Oh, having trouble getting the capping done, eh, fellas? There you go. Tech Marine goes back to base. Did he just run back and not retreat? That was weird. Maybe that was the end of the retreat. Scouts get a sergeant up so they can chuck grenades. More ways for the heretics to die. Trying to cap. They're just trying to cap, Scouts. Don't be dicks. Okay, they're going to see them out of there. Heretics won't attempt to charge them because of that grenade. Look how much they bunch up. There's like no collision on them with themselves. I remember Knob Squad being like that back in the day, and it caused a lot of problems with them trying to get into melee and stuff, so they changed it. Changed it up with their collision. There's a grenade. It's a good one. That's going to kill like five at least. Got six heretics with that grenade on the aspiring champion squad. Chucked it on these fellas. Would have wiped them if it, if it was a good one. Raptors here. These guys can jump on you and suppress you. With a bunch of Slaneshi inspired noise. CSM with a tunnel wall gives them 20% more damage, both ranged and in melee. Heretics wipe just from Bolt of Fire, which is a bit sloppy from Paradox. Those guys had the aspiring champion too. CSM maybe should have gone into melee. I think the, the fact that these guys were popping their Kraken Bolts maybe scared them off it, but they do have a tunnel wall. There's the Raptor Jump. Eventually get the suppression. On the Tech Marine, on the last little leap there, the second little leap. Tactical Marine's getting pretty low. Might eat a grenade. They could shotgun it into a grenade here. Raptors are still going in. 
Here comes the Chaos Lord to push the scouts back. Special attack misses. Another sergeant comes in. That was a shotgun blast, but those guys retreated, and there's the grenade. So he was going for shotgun blast into grenade, I think. Paradox. Sorry, Sophia. More heretics on the way for Paradox to replace those that, you know, blew up in mists of blood. And bolt fire. Not sure what these guys are trying to do. Just hold him up, I guess. Maybe they should have got into melee. Oh, faked him out with a grenade. Perfectly timed into the retreat. Are they going to kill a model? Surely they are, yep. Yeah. Unlucky not to get two there, I think. It's like it was coordinated between the two players. Let's, let's see a good grenade here, fella. Heretics. Oh, they can't quite finish the cap. Yeah, the double scouts are kind of menacing when they're fully upgraded like this and used relatively well. Paradox. Can't quite push that tier 2 button, but it does have the central VP. Get some long retreats on this map. Poor Chaos Lord. Got a lot of jogging to do. I wonder if the Combi Flamer would have been worthwhile against the Double Scouts. I mean, it would have been good, obviously, but would it be worth the 30 power? I think possibly. A lot invested in these Scouts. If you can shut them down and scare them off earlier, they're not going to have a lot of things to do in the engagements. And with all these upgrades, you don't want to just relegate them to capping stuff, if you're Sophia. See, like right there, Combi Flamer might have got a model off those guys. That's how good it is. Depending on which model it hit. 442 to 420 on the VP. Sophia is the first player to go tier 2. Hairstall kind of was ignoring those fellas there. Probably watching elsewhere. Heretics bashing on a node for the Dark Gods. For corn specifically, I think. Uh oh. Good grenade. Although it might have friendly fired those tactical marines, so maybe not super great. Another grenade. That could be a wipe. And it is a wipe. Beautifully done from Sophia. Seen some really good grenades from this player. Chaos Lord does see them off. But is he just going to decap? Or chase it? Looks like they're going for the decap. And the Chaos Lord. Did that funny animation he does when he just like swings his sword at thin air, which is quite cool. In sheer frustration. Shotgun blast, well timed on the heretics. CSM coming in though. And that eternal war bolt of fire can whittle down scouts quite quickly. Boom blast and those guys retreat. I feel like they could have stayed in play if they waited a second longer for those guys to retreat and could have been harassing these CSM with a grenade or something. But as it stands, they're in melee with the tech marine but as you can see only one of them able to get into melee here the others can still shoot though but since the tech marine is in melee he'll be taking less ranged damage which is something that most units in the game have kind of ranged resistance aura when in melee i, I believe it's 40 percent it's mostly uh, guardsmen and stuff that don't have it i think strangely the Avatar doesn't have it, or at least didn't at one point. Maybe they fixed that. I hope they did. That seems like a big deal. Good grenade. Didn't quite kill that CSM model, and Chaos Lord is being an annoying Chaos Lord. I mean, with the Combi Flamer, he's like the best tier 1 harasser. Especially if he also gets that Dark Halo up. Annoying as hell to deal with. Blood Letters for Paradox. Sophia perhaps responds with a Dreadnought once they see those blood letters. Although, looks like they're saving up for a Dreadnought anyway. Yep, Dreadnought is on the way. Those blood letters are going to have a tough time. So is the Blood Crusher. Which means Paradox is going to have to invest in another unit for anti-vehicle. They could try to stretch this out to tier 3. But I think that's a mistake. That's a super risky strategy because the Dreadnought just literally punches its way through your entire army. And then gets onto the power, and then what are you going to do in tier 3? They're going to need to get Plague Marines or Havocs or something. Plague Marines, much more viable as a straight up anti vehicle unit these days with their lower cooldown on the missile launcher. It's like a second less, but that adds up. Makes a big difference in their ability to shoot down vehicles. Dreadnought hits the field, starts off as a melee unit for Space Marines. 100 heavy melee DPS with a 40 damage splash on hit. Pretty amazing at 
ripping through, say, Bloodletters. These guys have power melee damage, can teleport around, and benefit from worship since they're all demon-like. This could be bad for the heretics. Double scouts in retreat path bow through his grenades. We've seen that Sophia's pretty adept at chucking those grenades. They couldn't even get the node. Poor bastards. Here we see the grenade. It's only one. Slightly off center, but a good hit nonetheless. Here come blood letters. That's their teleport. They also have a little passive short range teleport to try to get into melee. Kind of replaces their charge. Which is cool. I like little touches like that. 4 1 2 to 3 2 2 Dreadnought just hanging out in the mid, trying to work out how to cap VPs. He can't can't work it out. CSM with an aspiring champion now. You see him there. Allows him to use the pretty awesome slaughter ability. And there's your blood crusher. Another demon. With heavy melee damage this time, not a lot of hit points, and some cool abilities will lose pretty badly to a Dreadnought. Especially since it doesn't have melee resistance. There's a massive downside for the Blood Crusher. Havocs were cancelled there from by Paradox, suggesting we are going to see Plague Marines. Unless they do try to get that tier 3. I mean, Sophia hasn't pushed with the Dreadnought at all. Maybe they feel like they can go tier 3 and go for the tank. Turret going up from Sophia. This is a bad move. Dreadnought did a special attack there, which actually lowered its DPS. Wants to just, he wants to just keep doing regular attacks against a another single entity there. Some corn worship, plus two speed for your units, not bad at all. Scouts can't do much against the Blood Crusher. It's a good grenade. Several really good ones from Sophia there, so far. Dreadnought still hanging out in the mid. It is going to stay a heavy bolter turret, it seems. You can make it a missile launcher turret. Super effective against vehicles, but there's only the blood pressure so far. Any sign of anti-vehicle? Not. Oh, we have the orbs of the Omnissiah. And, of course, the Dreadnought himself to smack through stuff. And there's Mark Target on the blood pressure. Look how much damage those hits are doing now. That is nasty. 40% more damage. Tech Queen's going to fall. Blood players with their little mini teleport there getting it done. Not sure what they can do against the Dreadnought though. The stands against the entire army. And it is Plague Marines on the way for Paradox. I wonder how hard they were considering, considering that tier 3 there. Maybe they were like, oh, let's see how this engagement goes. Nope, can't beat a Dreadnought. Need Plague Marines. Should be aggressively pushing against the power. Probably really apprehensive. Because they think an anti-vehicle unit is going to hit the field any second. Which it is. It's going to be some lovely Plague Marines. Aren't they delightful with their stinkiness? Have a snaring missile launcher. Which as I mentioned these days does fire a little bit faster than it did in the past. They also have a faster rotation rate, which is not something you associate with Plague Marines, but really helps them get those shots off. Blood Crushers with a little charge. These guys are turning into Stone Guard veterans, having been dropped in. 326 to 310. There they are. It's going to be smack, smack, smack on a drop pod. Bloodletters couldn't quite get to model off those guys, so Stone Guard are first company tactical marines that can switch their ammo to combat all targets. They can use Vengeance rounds against the Blood Crusher, Hellfire rounds against Bloodletters, and Kraken Bolts against Killer Space Marines. Hellfire also for the Heretics, and actually the Plague Marines too, since these guys are regular infantry. 305 to 310. I'm not sure if. Uh... Yeah, they must have known about the turret, they saw it before. They certainly do now. Plague Marines are taking shots at it. Double grenades on them. Imagine if they had Mark Target there. That would have wiped those two models. Those grenades. Blood Crusher is going to take down the turret. Oh, maybe not. Blood Crusher is itself going to go. Oh, maybe not. I thought it was going to go down, but Corn Worship saves the day. Plague Marines are now getting shots on that Dreadnought. And there is 
blessing of the Omnisire, a global buff from the Tech Marine, repairing all friendly vehicles on the map over time. Pretty good ability, I think. And I think the uh, nothing these fellas can do against Dreadnoughts, but they have to get out of here. Just trying to take one of those tactical marines with them, couldn't quite manage it. 294 to 310, and tier 3 for Paradox. You would think into a tank, but they might be nervous about the orbs, so maybe we will see a great unclean one. Got a ways to go for that. Ways to go for that. Vengeance rounds loaded in to shoot the generators here. How quickly do they do they bash actually? It's not super fast. They're getting a the job done, certainly. Kind of hitting both of the gens there. They'll get it done. Not as good as a flamer though. Doom Blaster and Flea. Here comes the Blood Crusher, which used the demonic roar there to try and stop the grenade, but the grenade goes off and there's another really good one from Sophia. The, the roar actually pushed the scouts into the correct path to chuck the grenade afterwards, which is quite handy. The terrify effect from the roar is quite short. It's like a handful of seconds, as you saw there. Not a good, good day for heretics. Two full wipes, I think we've seen. Take Marines going for the VP, are they? There we go. Look how sprightly they are under corn worship. They must be so happy. Orb misses. Not so great at chucking orbs compared to grenades, it seems. Sophia. They have the power for a tank. And they're just trying to get the requisition. Here comes the Dreadnought again, though. Blood Crusher should be in the back lines here. Attacking and harassing those tactical marines, but goes in on the Dreadnought. Chaos Lord is going to go try to tie up the Tech Marine because he's firing that very painful plasma gun. Dread uh, Blood Crusher, sorry, goes down. I think it should have been tying up the Stone Guard there or something. That was the Emperor's Fist from the Dreadnought. And again, we see Blessing of the Omnisai healing him up. Double Scouts coming in. Those guys can repair. Some exploding Plague Marines. There's Slaughter activated by the CSM. Maybe they should be tying up some Marines themselves. They can draw melee weapons when they have Slaughter activated. Otherwise, it just I think it just decreases the cooldown of their Bolters. Maybe boost the DPS a bit too. Well, it, imp it improves the DPS because the cooldown is reduced, but I think it might maybe just boost the damage a little bit too. Or they can draw melee weapons, get some health regen, and smack stuff around, which is quite fun. It's a cool ability. Paradox had a bad fight. Down to three units here. I think, I think the tank is still right, though. Stone Guard got very low, but did not drop a model. Some misplays from Paradox. I think the tax and or the stone guard should have been tied up a lot earlier from the blood crusher and the chaos lord and the slaughter csm if you can't deal with a walker very well just try to just try to ignore it it can be really tough especially with a dreadnought and its big aoe attack but just dps the crap out of everything else plague marines now fully reinforced i'm not sure if they actually dropped a model but they are ready to go that nice health region on those fellas. These fellas going west side. Power is uncapped. They can also do some decapping on the wreck points there. Again, we see Sophia have a really good engagement and not really follow up with any pressure. Being very conservative in the mid. Super defensive. Those tax, those level 3 tax not moving at all to try and get decaps or power harasses or something. Could have stamped the game out right there. Down to 3 units. I feel like a power bash and a VP decap would have been the way to do it. A power decap as well, perhaps. There's only a node here. Bloodlet is still level 1. Plague Marines still level 1. CSM haven't even leveled up yet. Poor bastards. The scouts have been used super well. Level 4 and level 3. Give them some power armor. That was a uh, Kraken Bolts popped, which does boost the damage of the Plasma Gun, which is already super scary. 
That will take it up to 36 DPS plasma. Pretty nuts. Almost as good as the Tech Marines plasma at 37 here. There's overcharge though. And here's a tank with the Mark of Corn, which buffs the damage of all of the guns. Here we saw it. We saw Mark target into grenade and the Plague Marines are wiped. Really good play from Sophia. Synergizing the Mark target and the grenades is not something you see super often from Space Marine players. Great usage of the scouts there. Blood letters are gonna be fine. This tank is now super angry. Vengeance Round, Stern Guard, we're trying to get on the back of the Predator tank for some rear arm hits, but couldn't quite manage it. Chase him. Chase him. If you can get a good shot as they're all punched up. Don't think it's gonna go into the base. Maybe it should have. If you can afford the orb avoid the orbs. Might have been worth it. Paradox going for some heretics. Provide the worship support for the Blood Letters. Can also provide some repairs for the tank. Okay, I still got Armor of the Inferno. Perhaps a good way to shut down the scouts. Which are kicking some ass right now. They must both be level 4. Oh no, these guys are still level 3. And we see a Predator tank from Sophia. Most likely with, yep, last cannons. Well, a twin linked last cannon. I believe in a tabletop you can also get last cannons on the side sponsors. Wasn't that something in the original Dawn of War 2? Chaos Lord gets marked, targeted, and is being shot up pretty badly by these tactical marines with that plasma gun. 158 to 282. Dreadnought almost level 3. Done really well for, by uh, for Sophia. Lightning Claws on the way for Chaos Lord. Glad enough. That there is going to help harass this tank a bit. There's Blessing of the Omnisite again. Really liberal usage of that. Are you guys going to repair? That was a shotgun blast which doesn't suppress blood letters and a nuke. Imperial Abyss from Paradox wipes out all of the scouts. Didn't seem to notice it there, Sophia. Didn't move the scouts at all. You have a multi-mill to Dreadnought. Man, those scouts did so well. That's a really good nuke from Paradox. Wiping out two super high level and super effective scout squads. Really upgraded scouts too. The CSM escape. The tank is wary of pushing against the Dreadnought because of the Loyalist Predator tank there. 158 to 270 on the VPs. Chaos Law's leveled up. Does your, is it your hero that gets the XP from nuke damage or something? I wonder. It's a one-to-one -one cap. Maybe nobody does. XP goes to the warp. Icon of Corn on the way, that's going to give him health per hit. Which synergizes well with the fast attacking Lightning Claws. Since the health gain is flat, 1.5%. Doesn't scale with the damage of the hit or anything. Maybe it should. Opens up the Blood Maul Icon of Corn combo a little bit more. 148 to 270. These guys might drop a model on next hit, and they do, and they drop the sergeant. But I guess it doesn't matter for Stone Guard. It's not a model you have to purchase separately. Chaos Lord getting absolutely wrecked by the marked target there. And another Melter, this time for the Tech Marine. Slightly unlucky, maybe, to get a direct hit from the Predator tank. But it was a little bit sloppy just to wander in there anyway. CSMB capping, 138 to 270. It's kind of evened up. That nuke did a lot. Although Sophia could have been could have been a bit more aggressive, I think. A few times here. There's the tier three. Sorry, they're already tier three. Did you just cancel something? I just saw this change and assumed the tier three had just finished, but obviously the tank was out ages ago. 138 to 257. Sophia gearing up for what? Repairing the hell out of Dreadnought. 
scouts, sorry, heretics are bashing power here. They're going to get one gen. There we go. Not enough pressure here from Sophia. Fantastic grenade stuff. It's uh, not aggressive enough. Tactical Marines level 4 are going to grab that contested power. Finally here, something pushing up to look at this power. Meanwhile though, bad fight for Stone Guard veterans. Level 2 Bloodletters would have dealt with them quite quickly and it's double tanks for Sophia. Double last cannons maybe. Would make short work of the Predator tank especially if the tech maker get close enough to orbs or mark target it. Mark target goes on the Chaos Lord again. He's being really frustrated by this, the Chaos Lord. Just rebought himself, gets mark targeted again. Dreadnought is level 3 with a multi melter that's going to do tons of damage now. CSM have Marco Zinch. I wonder if Mark of Corn would have been worth it. Just to like get in the face of stuff. Try to shove it around a bit. Because a tank's probably not going to stay still while Mark of Corn and CSM are charging it. They do have that melt melter pistol. And they could get on rear armor with the power melee. But hey, Mark of Zinc CSM will tear through the enemy marines. A lot of pressure on the tech marine from range 2. 129 to 204. It's Havocs for Paradox, most likely with a LAS cannon since there's three vehicles on the field. Here we go. Marco Zinch. Chaos Lord. Oh, that's a mistake. Chaos Lord is retreating for no reason. Meant to retreat the CSM, I guess. Yeah, don't show your rear armor. Chaos Predator, dude. Look at this. Just having a look. That guy had a bad day. Las Cannon to the back of the head. Can they push with this? Because you know the thing about a Las Cannon is back away from the firing arc. And you're not going to get hit by it, obviously. Players generally do not want to move a setup team around in the middle of a fight. So now has spotted the Las Cannon most likely. Oh, unlucky for the tank, it's not actually hitting those fellas. Here come Blood Letters, though. They popped and they show no, no fear, but it's not enough. And they, oh, they got a decap. That's probably what they wanted. God, they wanted to get a decap. 88 to 204. Paradox needs to be, do something here. Okay, so probably just going to get marked again. The other guy see burn. A decent hit. Can't really predict exactly where those fireballs are going to go. 77 to 204. Mark target is up on the Chaos Lord and he gets absolutely wrecked again. Probably go down and does go down. Really important fight for Paradox. Wipes out the Stern Guard. Last Cannon is getting shots in. Tech Marine doesn't throw the orb, but the tank does go down. not being tied up by blood letters. Can they get this done? Oh. Drop for the Marines. Says no. Heretics can now switch off their worshipping mode and start smacking stuff. But uh, this might be a GG. And a Sophia win. I mean, Paradox does have resources. But what are they going to do? Terminators? I don't think so. Yep, there's a concede from Paradox. There's not enough time to turn this around here. And we saw some awesome grenades from Sophia. But uh, not enough aggression, I think, throughout the game. Played it very cool, very defensive, which I guess got them the victory. Can't knock it. But might have been able to get it a little bit earlier. When Paradox are down to like three units, if they push the power, decap the VP, kind of sat around here and harassed. Don't think Paradox would have been able to break out very easily. We had a level 4 Chaos Lord and a level 6 Tech Marine. Chaos Lord got handled towards the end by the marked target Tech Marine. 
every engagement just gets marked and can't do much. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.